Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us on another episode of Ask Sharifa. Today's guest is an amazing woman, someone I know you just want to meet. But before we bring her in, I'm going to ask you to do what I always ask you to do, and to go ahead and share this Facebook Live, share this interview, because friends don't let friends miss out on Ask Sharifa. Today's guest is Diana Ashworth. She is a businesswoman, entrepreneur, and she is an author. And she's going to tell us a little bit about her business, High Powered Health. Good afternoon, Diana. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am excellent. I'm excellent. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. So let's talk about High Powered Health. What exactly is High Powered Health? Yes, I am a software developer and account executive for High Powered Help. It's based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, what we do is we do custom software for business, businesses, apps, and websites. So you tell us what needs your business have. We do, you know, get your ideas, build a custom plan, which is free, and then we can design all kinds of things for you. How did you begin? How did you start High Powered Help? Um, I started it, I was working in the technical support computer in industry anyways, and I saw this opening um, for a sales position, and that's how I got in with High Powered Help. And it's, I'm a, I own, my part is I own my own business out of it, but that's how I got started with them. Okay. I did and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's amazing. So you said you own your own business as a, a part of them. So what aspects do you handle yourself? What aspects do I what? What what aspects are your business? Um, the software developing and the app developing, mobile apps and the websites. Okay, so you, and I, I'm not. Um, I just want to make sure. So you yes. develop because I haven't met that many software developers, and to right. me, that's a very difficult thing to do. I wouldn't even know where to begin with developing an app or developing software. I can mm -hmm. hardly even add the Google Maps plugin to my website, you know, because you got to go through all these APIs and this, uh, like, yeah. never mind. We just, we just yeah. won't have a map on the website. So you, but you develop the software yourself? We do. We do. We have um, engineers that work with us also, and between us and them, we combine it and we take the ideas and then build the program that the uh, company's needing. Because some companies need custom software. You know, mm -hmm. they have multiple businesses. They can't be there all the time. We can make a button to where all the businesses are taken care of. The phone calls are done. Virtual assistants is there. So it's a lot of things we can incorporate and do. Mm -hmm. And what made you interested in this field? I've been interested in the computer field ever since college. I graduated okay. from college in 2004. I had a minor in computers, and I've always been interested in computers for, mm -hmm. you know, ever since I was probably about 16 years old. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What do you like most about computers? Um, I like most about, you know, their flexibility, what they can do for you, um, how you can access and you know, make spreadsheets, put your information in them. I love that. I love how they work, knowing how they work, putting them apart, putting them back together. I love doing that. Um, that's what I love most about them. There's quite a few things, but that's just a brief synopsis. Oh, okay. Now, is there any particular software that your company or you have developed that you're, you're just extremely proud of? Yes, we did one. Um, we have NDAs with a lot of our customers so we can't really say the name no, but i can tell you what we did mm -hmm. what we did it was a um large corporation and they were needing um custom software because they had grown you know from when they were you know smaller and they had grown and they needed more custom software for their employees and reps business rep sales reps etc so we built a custom software for them for all the reps were able to have their own app you know, use the sales reps um, information when they were out in the field and it would go straight back to the office. We, we did that. We developed a mobile app for them to um, check in, check out, you know, for their time clock. Um, we did like six different features with that. And we were very proud of that. And they've been a client now for over six years. Well, that's amazing. It's not often that you hold on to clients that long, especially in the IT software development app industry, because those right. tend to move from maybe, you know, one project as opposed to having a long-term 
um, relationship, relationship. Now, you also mentioned that you're an author. Can you tell us yeah. a little bit about your book, Diana? I sure can. Yes, I'm an author. We did. It's called Just Say Yes, and I did it with. The, it's a collaboration book that I did with a lot of other authors. Which um, we talk about visionaries, entrepreneurs, um, people who have been through obstacles and how they overcome them. And that's what we, that's what the book is about. It's about uplifting people, letting people know, yes, you have an obstacle, you're going through something, but you don't have to stay there. You can get over it. You can make it through. There is always tomorrow. So that's what the book is about. And it's in the pre-sale phase now. So if you order now, it's an autographed copy and we're just really excited about it. And you can also get your name and business put somewhere in the book for an advertisement. If you would like, there's a fee for that, but your name would be there because it's going out to thousands of people. So I'm really excited about it. What type of stories? And I know because, again, the book is in pre-sale. The book is coming out shortly. What are yeah. some of the things that you can tell us about any of the stories that stand out to you in the book? Well, I can tell you, like, for mine, um, one of, you know, I had a massive stroke in 2016, May of 2016. They said if it had been a couple of more inches on my spinal stem, I would have died immediately. Um, so after that, knowing that God gave me a second chance, I was wanting to, you know, share my story and uplift people. So my story in the book is about the obstacles I faced with being paralyzed, you know, um, from not being able to walk, the things that happen to your body when you're not being able to walk, the health issues I faced, um, dealing with the pain and the mental issues I faced from not walking. And it's just, you know, explaining my story and to let someone know they may not be going through the same thing as me as being paralyzed, but they may still be going through something. And just letting them know that I made it through, how I made it through the steps I did and, you know, to help them, you know, uplift them and motivate them. Oh, wow, I'm sorry to hear that, but I love to see your you're standing in your own power and you didn't let this get you down and just get up and, and quit. Now, with all that happened, why focus on a business or being an author? You know, sometimes people don't want to do anything because they're trying to get mentally back to where they were. So why then focus on, on a business? Well, it didn't, I didn't start focusing on the business right away. It took me some time to get my mental together and everything because it's such a post-traumatic event a stroke is. So I had to go through a lot of therapy and um, psychology and a lot of things just to get back right. But once I did, and I came back around, then I focused on my, you know, cause I already had a degree before cause I had the stroke during brain surgery. So I already had a degree. So then I started wearing a, you know, doing a business and cause I had the time, you mm -hmm. know, I was not working, but it took me, you know, I had to get my mental stuff together. That took time that took over two and a half years. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, yeah. it, it's not something you can just jump into after a stroke. It, it just, you, it won't happen. No. Mm -hmm. Now, we're, we're, I mean, to me, it would seem like there met, must have been someone who said, Diana, why are you writing a book? You know, because the reason I asked that, let me just preface it with saying this. Okay. Is some of the things that I do or I've, I've done, more people have said, Sharifa, why are you even going to try that? Why are you even going to attempt that? It's just crazy. Sit down, you know, stop adding all these businesses, stop creating all these websites. Right. Yeah, I, I personally kept going. Did you have any challenges where people felt like, okay, you're already paralyzed. Why don't you just sit down? Oh, yes. I got that from um, many people. Um, but like my answer to them was, you know, yes, I'm paralyzed, but I'm not dead. Mm -hmm. And you know, just because I'm paralyzed does not mean that I can't do the same benefits as someone that's walking, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, yes, I can't walk, but I have my brain in my mind and I should be able to access that, use that to mm -hmm. for, for the um, events and activities that I want to do. I shouldn't have to just stop and lay in the bed all the time or in the wheelchair or whatever. So that was what I said to them. Excellent advice. Excellent words of advice. And it's power in that. It's power in being able to do what you want to do. What are some of the events and activities that you're looking forward to being able to do? Um, right now I volunteer with hospice. I enjoy that. Um, I'm a Sunday school teacher, um, author. I do the business. Um, and I also do activities with the chamber of commerce in my area. Mm -hmm. 
So you are a very busy woman is what you're telling me. Very busy, yes. Oh, wow. And I find that as a great coping mechanism because it doesn't, you know, you've heard the term, some people might, some might have not, but the an idle mind is the devil's playground. And mm -hmm. so I just keep my mind going and focused and, um, you know, just enriched and learning things. And it just, it helps me. You know, I mean, even if I'm taking a class online just to learn, I never want to stop learning, you know, because mm -hmm. I always want to keep my skills sharp. Right, but it also seems that not only do you want to learn, but you also want to teach. You also want to help oh, yes. other people just simply by being here today on Ask Sharifa, being able to use your story and your expertise and what's in this new book that's coming out to be able to help other people. What are some of, in business, what are some of the lessons that you learned as an entrepreneur? Um, one of the lessons I learned, you know, an entrepreneur, it doesn't happen overnight. You've got to put the work in, you know, you can't just say, I want to start my business and just think, boom, you're going to have a um, million dollars the next day. It doesn't work like that. You've got to sow seeds. You've got to plan. You've got to nurse relationships. You've got to really get out there networking. Um, but the biggest thing about it is don't give up. It may take a while, but don't give up. You never know what God has for you on the other side. And I mean, if he took something from you, he's going to make, I'm telling you what he's got for you is way better. And mm -hmm. so you just go on and, you know, just keep fighting. And with the entrepreneurship, look at, you know, look at your networking events, look at things in your area, look at events, look at, okay, what business am I doing? Do I have a business plan? Is it a good marketing? Do I have a good marketing plan? Just think of all those things when you're incorporating your entrepreneurship and then your business can go further. Mm -hmm. Now, it, many people wouldn't know where to start with a business plan. Right. I know you can Google different templates, you know, right. but we, it can be kind of overwhelming. Do you have yeah. any advice on some of the, the requirements or some things necessary for creating a business plan to be able to create your business? Um, with the business plan, you know, it is incorporated for each business, you know, how the needs of what they are doing, but you want to make sure that in the business plan, you've got like a mission statement. That's number one. Then after that, you want to explain your business, what, you, you know, the key factors of what you're going to be doing, you know, how you're going to be doing it, how much money you're going to need, are you going to need capital? Um, what your business will involve, what, who's your audience, who are you trying to reach, who's your target networking, you know, you want all that to start with the business plan, and I help people with that too, but that's what I would do to start with it, and like you said, there are templates online, but you still, you can use them from, you know, just as maybe as a background, but you still, there's certain things that you have to have in order to, you know, build a good stable business plan that will help you and that you can nurture and will help you, you know, bring in revenue for your business. Well, something definitely told me that you would be able to assist someone with, with a business plan because you have yeah. all this wisdom, guidance, expertise. Now, one of the wow. things that you mentioned is how much money you would need. Sometimes as entrepreneurs, we, to say it bluntly, don't have a clue. We have no idea. You know, we right. use words like we need a lot of money or we need millions of dollars as opposed to being able to actually sit down and take an accurate look of the resources that are required in order to create, a, uh, you know, actual real business. Do you have any advice on how to determine how much money is required to begin a business or to, to have a business? So how much money is required to start one, you mean? Yes. Yes. Um, it depends on the field that you're working in, and it depends on if you're going to be doing it alone or with a partner. Mm -hmm. That would depend on how much money you would need. Um, and also, if you could, maybe some businesses, you could start off small, not a lot of money, and then later on, as you got bigger and got customers, you can add more money. You know, so some of them I've seen from anywhere they spend anywhere from a hundred to five hundred dollars, you know, starting off. Um, and, and that's in between there. It's not it's a simple hundred, it's not a simple five hundred, it's in between there. That's what I've seen now. Some who are building bigger businesses, I've seen them at like you know, over five thousand. You know, it just depends. But I'm talking that's a business I'm talking about at a place, not at home, that type of thing. So mm -hmm. that's like at all.
Now, if you're just now tuning in, again, on Ask Sharifa, we are speaking with businesswoman, entrepreneur, and author, Diana Ashworth, and we are discussing not only her business, High Powered Help, but her book and just allowing Diana to give entrepreneurs advice on starting their own business. So definitely want to make sure we go ahead and share this interview. Now, Diana, what are some things that you wish you would have known you know, things that could have saved you some time or, or life lessons that you learned in the process of creating your own business? Um, I think some things that I would have wished I would have known, excuse me, is just how much um, you put the work in and what how much time it takes for it to, um, the seed that you plant for it to grow. And for, you know, for how to nourish and like how with relationships and the networking, I wish I knew more about that at the beginning, you know, how to network, where to go and all that. I really, you know, that would have helped me a lot, you know, that would have saved a lot of time. And um, just with the capital and getting my business started, that I didn't have to have like every little thing right then. I could have done it in segments and that would have helped me too, so. That is wonderful advice. Now, Diana, we are coming down to the last few minutes of the show. And what I allow our guests to do is just to speak directly to the viewers, to the people listening, watching live, as well as to the people in the archive and let them know what you want them to take away from your interview. Okay. Do I go now or they come? No, no, you go ahead. You know, okay. let them know. They're listening. Okay. But um, what I want you to take from the interview is just don't ever give up. Even if you're doing a business, you're in the starting phases or whatever, don't ever give up. Give up. You can do it. Um, it just takes time. If you need help, I can help you. Um, also, just take away, you know, my book is a very uplifting and motivating book. I can send you information on how to order that. And just just believe in yourself. Know your worth. And then do it. Just go do it. Don't procrastinate you know, make your plans, make your business plan. You need help with that. Like I said, I can assist you with that, but go do it. Don't, don't let your dreams go away. Always follow your dreams and, and let them, you know, you can nourish them and there's no telling what can happen for you. Absolutely. I, I love it. I love it. Diana, I want to thank you for being a guest on today's episode of Ask Sharifa. Thank you. You are so welcome and to all our viewers who have tuned in, Sherry, Lucy, Gary, quite a few people are watching the show live. Thank you for tuning in. To everyone who watches this in the archive, thank you for tuning in. And if you're interested in watching more of my interviews, interested in being a guest or for sponsorship opportunities, please visit the website at AskSharifa.com. Until then, everyone have a wonderful day.